Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is October the 12th, 2020. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, late last week, there was a pro football weekly, pro football talk, podcast involving SI's Peter King and Mike Florio, right? Who you see on NBC's Sunday night coverage. And they were talking about Alex Smith. And Peter King flatly said that given the severity of Alex Smith's compound fracture, that the minute Alex entered a game, and took his first snap, Peter King was going to vote him comeback player of the year. And Mike Florio agreed. Understand, Peter King and Mike Florio have been in the game a long time. They understood that Alex Smith's injuries were career threatening. Right? Career threatening. Let's also be clear on the Alex Smith timeline, because it's different than the Dak Prescott timeline, right? Alex signed the big multi-year deal first. So during his comeback attempt, and folks, it took years, during his comeback attempt, Alex Smith was getting paid big money, right? He wasn't going to retire without making a big effort. But as he made the big effort, he knew he was being paid for the big effort. He wasn't a one-year franchise tag guy who faced financial uncertainty after that year. So, of course, Alex Smith came back. And Alex Smith didn't look that bad, but it was cringeworthy many times because the Washington football team's offensive line is not up to par. Well, let's shift gears and let's talk Dak Prescott, right? When Alex Smith first got hurt, there was a crowd out there saying the right things. This guy's a fighter. He has a chance to come back. He's going to give it 100%. It's going to be tough. He's going to need surgery, if not surgeries. But he has a chance to come back. He can do it, right? There's always optimism in the moment, right? There's always a part of us that wants to root for the guy who's just been badly injured. Well, we're in that stage right now with Dak Prescott. But unlike Alex Smith, Dak Prescott was operating under a one-year franchise tag, right? Thank God the injury happened after he signed for the big money for one year. So he did get over $31 million. At least he's guaranteed that amount for this year. So, Prescott, who, unlike Alex Smith, was not the first pick in the draft. In fact, Prescott was not a first round pick, nor was he a second round pick. Right, Prescott, who was picked later in the draft, hadn't gotten the big money until this year. Now, before I go further, let me just say, I'm not here to blame anyone over why Prescott did not sign a multi-year deal, right? That's not my focus. I'm not here to point a finger at the team or at the agents. That's not the point. The point I'm making here is that Prescott has money in the bank, right? Let's just assume that close to half of the 31 plus million dollars gets paid in taxes. Let's assume that some of the money goes to his agent. Prescott should still have north of $10 million in the bank. Now that's important. That's very important. 
because it changes things. Right? For many people watching this video, for many of us, let me include myself in the mix. Right? If you have more than $10 million to fall back on, even in this low interest rate period of time, then that changes your decision making on whether you're going to make the sacrifice necessary to try to get back in the National Football League. Right? This league carries risks. Prescott's injury is serious. You have a group of superstars, including former, some former Cowboy superstars, Tony Dorsett, for example, who are suffering from diminished memory. The game is dangerous. Understand, some all-time players, Gale Sayers, for example, Johnny Unitas, when he left the game, ended up with debilitating injuries that didn't allow them to fully live normal lives. That's the risk the game brings. Players and fans should acknowledge it. Let me also say this too. Understand that it'll take years if it ever happens, for Dak Prescott to be in a position where he can credibly ask for $35 million and up in annual salary from any football team, much less the Dallas Cowboys. I know in the moment people say, oh, well, he'll take this money now and he'll just play out the franchise tag, and then next year, salaries will continue to move upward. And, you know, next year, he'll get the big money. Right? Patrick Mahomes is going to sign. Sean Watson is going to sign. And then, of course, Dak Prescott can say, hey, you're paying Mahomes 40 or whatever. You're paying Deshaun close to 40. I want money in that area code. Right, folks, I'm just telling you, very few men have the opportunity to even discuss with NFL teams salaries of $35 million and up annually. To get to that point is going to take Dak Prescott several years. I was texting some friends during the games yesterday, and there was some delusion that Dak is going to bounce right back. Right? These are the same people who believe in a V-shaped economic recovery. The truth is far different. First, let's just look at the numbers. Would it surprise you to know that you have more than twice the number of United States Senators than you do starting quarterbacks in the National Football League? In other words, you see a Senator Chuck Schumer, for example, right? There are far more United States Senators than there are starting NFL quarterbacks. If you do the math, you'll find out that, in fact, there are more than three times the number of U.S. Senators than there are NFL starting quarterbacks. Folks, these starting jobs are scarce to non-existent. Let's also ask the hard question that no one really wants to ask because it's impolite. Understand, we're in a media bubble when things like this happen. Right? We don't want fans to realize how cutthroat sports leagues are. Right? We don't want fans to realize how fragile everything is. Let's think about how fragile things are for Dak Prescott with a nod to Nassim Taleb. A big question here is how long will it take for Dak to get back to where he was physically? Isn't that a big question? 
Let's say a year from now, it's October of 2020, let's say the surgery was successful. And let me just point out, when athletes have big time surgeries, following big time injuries, 99% of the time I hear them announce the surgery was successful. It's only later that you start to hear things like you heard in the Alex Smith story. Oh, there's an infection. Oh, we need to do more surgery. I believe Alex Smith had more than a handful of surgeries. Right, when they give you feel-good news after a big-time surgery like this, where they say, oh, the surgery is successful, you need to discount it. Because they never say, you know, the doctor said the surgery was unsuccessful. If they're not going to tell you about the unsuccessful surgeries, which you know happen, not everyone makes it back, then you can't rely on the declaration that the surgery was successful. So let's say that Dak had a successful surgery. Let's best case it. Right? He's not playing the rest of this year. We know that. Right? So let's say he's ready to rock and roll for training camp next year. Let's also talk about some uncertainties that are out of his hands. Let's speculate that COVID, which has lingered with us for months, which might be with us for years. Let's say that COVID goes away. Maybe there's a vaccine. Maybe there's a different societal approach that doesn't include lockdowns, where people say, if I get COVID, it's not that big a deal. Well, understand, if COVID doesn't go away, how's the team going to get a good read on Dak's physical condition? Right? You can't bring him in. Players aren't allowed to work out for teams. Even some NFL owners with power and influence, David Tepper, might be the richest NFL owner out there, did not know the physical condition of the quarterback on his own team, Cam Newton, during the summer. Said so to reporters. Didn't have the opportunity to fully sit down with his own guy and figure out the shape his guy was in. How's a different team going to do that if COVID doesn't go away? Well, let's say somehow the COVID health problem goes away. Okay, great. Let's say Dak recovers from his surgery, is in football shape, right? He's been starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Here, in a video I did just last week before the injury, I said, hey, Dallas, a team that right now leads the NFC East at 28 to 1 odds, whatever they were going off at the time, should be part of your NFL futures betting portfolio, right? I believe Dak's a better than advertised player. But if everything breaks right for Dak, right? That ankle is back in decent shape. He's somehow in the off season able to throw on it, get himself in football shape. Right? COVID's gone away. He can work out for teams. He convinces a team that he's NFL ready. Folks, that doesn't put him in a position to make $35 million a year as part of a long-term deal. That doesn't put him in a position to be designated a franchise tag player or a transition tag player. No, that puts him in the position that Former number one pick in the draft, Jameis Winston, and former number two pick in the draft, Marcus Mariota, are currently in. Right? Those guys are healthy. Those guys are ready to play NFL football. Those guys have had some decent years. Mariota, not Mariota, Winston, for example, threw for more than 5,000 yards last year. I believe both of those guys are making about $7 million a year. Once the backup with the Saints 
The other is to back up with the Oakland Raiders. Right? That's the road Dak's traveling. He's earning over $30 million this year as a franchise player. Folks, if everything goes right, in my opinion at least, if he's able to bounce back quickly, if there are further surgeries, further problems, complications, infections, best case, he's looking at the salary that Jameis Winston is getting this year. Right? Let's remember, Winston, like that, was a starting quarterback in the National Football League for years. Let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Let's say the Dallas Cowboys feel an obligation to Dak. Let's say Jerry Jones is a shrewd businessman and he understands that his brand will take a hit if it looks like he's turning his back on a guy who up until his last play was the starting quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. A guy who was on the short list of passing leaders from last year in terms of yardage. So let's say Dak wants to stay with the Cowboys. Rich history. Right? Roger Staubach, super back, a uh, super bowl Dallas quarterback, Troy Aikman, right? There's a long list of quarterbacks. Danny White for the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Romo earning top dollar as an announcer. Let's say Dak wants to stay in that world of connections, right? There are Cowboys all over the place. Michael Irvin, Primetime, Deion Sanders doing big things. Well, just understand that the question with the Cowboys, who now have Andy Dalton as their starting quarterback, another guy who was a starter in this league for years, a guy who made the playoffs multiple years. The question is not who is better. It's not like Dak shows up, competes with Andy, and then a decision is made on who is better. Right? That's not the way it's going to work, folks. You and I understand that the NFL is a business. The question is going to be who is better at the price? Right? The Cowboys know Dak Prescott wants 35 plus million dollars a year. If Andy Dalton is willing to play for less, let's say Andy has made money over the years. Let's say Andy, a Texan, has dreamt of being starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm telling you, there are a lot of young quarterbacks with that dream. Right? Great stadium. Team with a rich tradition. A wide receiving core that has quarterback prospects drooling. Well, understand, if one guy would be happy at $20 million a year, or $25 million a year. And the other guy is unhappy unless he gets $35 million a year. Folks, that decision makes itself. If the guys are close, if one is a 10 and the other is a 9, or one is an 8 and the other is a 7, the price is going to determine who you pick as starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Understand, too, Dak's injury creates an uncertainty that you don't have with Andy Dalton. In other words, every time Dak's hit hard and gets up a little gingerly, the team trainer is going to be concerned, rightly or wrongly. These things matter. Dak's price is going to be discounted by the uncertainty caused by his injury. Let's also talk about the competition Dak faces. If he decides to come back, if he decides to get back in the saddle and to put himself in a position where an NFL team would want to designate him the franchise quarterback, 
I'm just going to name some other guys who at one time were thought of as extremely talented. In the cases of some, these guys were very high draft picks, but they might be available. They might be on the quarterback market next year. Sam Darnold. Right, Joe Flacco's already getting snaps with the Jets. Flacco was a very high draft pick. Excuse me. Sam Darnold was a very high draft pick. Cam Newton. I know Jared Stidham lost the Patriots last game. I want you to look at that game more closely. Right? One of the picks hits his receiver's hands and then bounces out. Everyone understood that Cam Newton was the top quarterback in camp. Then you had Brian Hoyer as the number two. So Stidham wasn't getting snaps. If anyone understands the salary math well in the National Football League, it's Bill Belichick. He understands. If I can get my quarterback at a reasonable price, that gives me more money to spend on the offensive line. That gives me more money to spend on running backs. That gives me more money to spend on defensive backs. Right? And so, at the end of the season, understand Cam Newton, a former first pick in the draft, a guy who doesn't really need the NFL at this point. He's made big money, had a nine-figure deal. Right? Cam Newton might want to be paid $35 million a year, maybe $30 million a year. Jared Stidham is still going to be on his rookie deal. Again, how close are the guys? If Cam Newton's a 10 and Stidham's a 5, okay, fine. Go with Cam. Pay the premium. But if Belichick in practice sees that Stidham who was competing with Cam in camp for the starting job until Stidham got hurt. That Stidham's actually closer to Cam. A better passer than Cam. An above average athlete when he wants to run. Maybe not Cam running the football, but above average. Then maybe Cam Newton's on the open market. Right? They're New York reporters right now who are very critical of Daniel Jones. Another guy picked very high in the draft. He's currently the starting quarterback for the Giants, but the Giants currently don't have a win. Right, folks? Daniel Jones could well be on the market. Let's talk about some other names. You know, I know it's hard to believe. This guy clearly is a first ballot Hall of Famer. But his team picked a quarterback in last year's draft, awfully early. This guy also has had years where he's been hurt. He's not the biggest guy. Aaron Rodgers. Right now, I agree. Things are working for Aaron Rodgers right now with this coach. Right? Both last year in the playoffs, they beat. Seattle, they beat Russell Wilson in the playoffs last year, and of course, and they were able to do so at home. In other words, they were successful enough to be playing home playoff games last year. Now, of course, this year they're off to the fast start. But again, they have Jordan Love. Right? The relationship between Aaron and the team doesn't seem to be a honeymoon relationship. What about Matt Ryan? Today, the Atlanta Falcons just fired their head coach. You know people are looking at age. Doesn't matter how good the quarterback is. They're looking at age and they're saying, well, how much longer can this guy play? Not only that, they're looking at salary. Right? We can't ask Rodgers or Matt Ryan to take a pay cut. Right? We just can't do it. So, if the team isn't ready to win right now, and the Atlanta Falcons might be in rebuilding mode, 
you might see a lot of veterans, including a Matt Ryan, hit the market. Right? Cam Newton has to consider that possibility. What about Phillip Rivers? Indy's off to a fast start this year. Right? But Phillip is older. Frank Wright could decide, hey, it's time for me to get the next quarterback in place. Well, there were a lot of teams around this league who would welcome a vet with the credibility of Philip Rivers. Right? Understand, all of these guys, as well as Jameis, as well as Marcus Mariota, are in the mix. All of these guys want starting quarterback jobs in the National Football League. So, if Dak is able to get back to where he was right before the injury, by training camp of next year, 10 months from now, right? The competition is thick. If he wants to stay with the Cowboys, he has, he has to convince people that he's that much better than Andy Dalton, so much better that he warrants franchise tag money. Or he's going to have to give the team a discount. Say, I'm back. I'm prepared to prove it to you. I'm willing to take less than I was asking for last year on a deal that is probably not going to be a five-year deal. That's if things work out for him. And of course, there's another group we haven't even talked about. Young kids in college that the scouts know about. Right, let's remember, you have a whole group of quarterbacks not picked in the first round of the draft. Right, Drew Brees was a second round draft pick. Right, teams every year uncover gems, Drew Locke with Denver. Right, and of course every year you have young guys pick close to the top. Right, Tua, right now, with the Miami Dolphins. We're assuming he can play. Right, you saw Justin Herbert take the starting quarterback job with the Los Angeles Chargers. Right, so Dak, of course, is going to be competing with those guys. There was a time where Dak was a young guy straight out of college. Earning not that much compared to the guys asking for $30 million a year. So if things break right for Dak, if he goes full tilt into rehab, is able to get himself back to where he is today, if the Cowboys say, hey Dak, come try out for the starting job, and they might not. Let's be real here. Cowboys, right now, in part because of Dak, sit atop of the NFC East. What happens if Andy Dalton gets them in the playoffs? What happens if Andy Dalton develops a rapport with Cooper, the wide receiver, with Gallup, the wide receiver, with C.D. Lamb, the wide receiver? What happens if the team turns the page? And Andy Dalton is able to get the Cowboys in the playoffs with the rhythm Familiarity with the new head coach, Mike McCarthy, after a few more games, McCarthy's going to have more experience with Andy Dalton than he has right now with Dak Prescott. If things are humming with Dalton, the Cowboys might say to Dak, hey Dak, you can come back, but as a backup. Right? Again, a Jameis Winston salary, a Marcus Mariota salary, seven to eight million dollars a year. That's if things hum. If things don't hum. If he has setbacks. 
Understand, some ankle injuries have fallen some great athletes. Look up the Grant Hill story. He was one of the best players in the National Basketball Association. He had an ankle problem. Right, folks? Eventually, his career dissipated. An ankle problem can throw off your balance, can throw off the rest of your body. Let's say Dak has complications and problems. Right? Teddy Bridgewater, Alex Smith, you're out of the game for more than a year. You're working hard to come back. Right then, folks, we're talking about not next year, but the year after. Where teams will have an opportunity to give him a look. We're talking about a long road back. Now understand. If you're a quarterback in the National Football League and you haven't made more than $30 million this year, if you have no money and this is your best way to make millions of dollars, right? If the alternative is a job in media not paying that much or a regular job not paying millions of dollars, okay, you say, well, this is my chance to rehab to make millions of dollars. What's wrong with making seven, eight million dollars a year? But understand this guy has money in the bank. It's a dangerous sport. It's a long road. If he is Teddy Bridgewater and Teddy's bounced back, folks, Teddy is the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. Right? If he's Teddy Bridgewater, then two years from now, that's when he gets the backup job. Bridgewater was the backup with the New Orleans Saints. Right then, if he distinguishes himself, and let's remember how things broke for Bridgewater. Drew Brees got hurt. Bridgewater, the backup, then came in, looked great, won some games. Right, that put him in a position to be the starting quarterback not on a loaded Dallas Cowboy team, but on a team many people picked to finish last in their division. A team with a first-year head coach. Right, a first-year head coach. Now, Carolina is exceeding expectations, but understand, talent-wise, nobody viewed them as being on the same page with the Dallas Cowboys right now, right? The expectations with the Cowboys are make a run in the playoffs. Is, isn't that the expectation? With Carolina, it's rebuilding. You see these Panther guys. I saw Greg Olson the other day. Then you realize, oh, he's wearing a Seattle Seahawks jersey or whatever the jersey was. I saw Cam Newton. Oh, he's with the Patriots, right? The guys you remember as being Carolina Panthers. Many of them are on different teams. So Ron Rivera, oh, he's coaching the Washington football team. Right, if Dak Prescott's recovery goes slow, then he might find himself in the position of Teddy Bridgewater three years down the road, right? Two years out of the league, right? Then he gets the backup job. Then he ends up with the head, you know, with the starting quarterback job. So, I think there is a greater than 50% chance, and I know this sounds hard, that Dak Prescott has played his last game in the National Football League. Understand, he has certain things going for him. Great reputation. Great reputation. I think he might have led the league in passing yards last year. If not, he was certainly on a short list. Right? In a sport where we idolize warriors, we understand the warrior who suffered <clears throat> the career-ending injury. Right? And so, young guys are going to look at that. Kind of like young guys looked in an earlier generation at Gale Sayers. You know, sure, the guy's career was relatively short, but 
He was a warrior up until the last play. Right? Understand, too. Dak is one of the most known alum football players of his alma mater. I believe it's uh, Mississippi State. Right? Dak, you know, could parlay that into a job as athletic director someplace. Maybe his alma mater. Maybe a different SEC school. Right? Dak, uh, Dak might be able to parlay his status uh, into being an executive with the Dallas Cowboys, right? Dak has options. The options that having more than $10 million in the bank give you, right? It could be that Dak decides, hey, I'm going to come back. Then he's working hard. Then he's working hard. Then he realizes He's years away from being in a position where he can be franchised by a National Football League team again. Years away. He's years away from being in a position where teams are going to be talking to him about four and five year deals with heavy signing bonuses. Given that he's years away from all that, Given the dangers inherent in the sport, where Bob Costas is no longer affiliated with the NFL because, in part, of his concerns about CTE, where some Hall of Famers, Junior Seau comes to mind, right? Um, we know suffered greatly when he left the league for health reasons. Given the health risks, and given the fact that if they put a plate in Dak's ankle, Dak might be reminded every day as he walks around when he gets tired of the injury he suffered to his ankle. Right? Prescott might well, because of his options, because there are investment opportunities out there that might yield him a significant amount of money. Precious metals, gold, silver, uh, Bitcoin, Understand, if the economy swoons and there's a liquidity crisis, Dak might be able to get assets dirt cheap. Right? If Dak's a savvy investor, if Dak understands all the other options around him and just how rare these starting quarterback jobs are in the National Football League, again, it's more than three times harder to be an NFL starting quarterback than it is a U.S. Senator, just numerically, right? Understand, too, of the NFL starting quarterbacks, right? The ones making big money are about, what, the top 35%? You have some starting quarterbacks making not big money by NFL standards, right? How much is Justin Herbert making? He's a starting quarterback in the league. How much is Sam Darnold making? He's a starting quarterback in this league. Right? You have a whole group of starters not making Ben Roethlisberger money. Right? How much is Lamar Jackson making right now? If that does the math, he might find that he was in an exalted rare place before in his contract negotiations with the Cowboys. And that, at least to this observer, he's several years away from having that opportunity now, right? Just like Alex Smith would be several years away from being able to sign the contract he's currently performing under. I'm not sure if we ever see Dak Prescott back on a field. I'll be even more shocked if Dak Prescott is the starting quarterback of the National Football League at any time during the next season, the 2021 season. That's how big his injury is. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. One of my reasons in making this video is just to get past all this positive spin we're hearing. Folks, this is a life-altering moment for fans and the player. Right? Yes, 
Some men have come back from worse. Look at Alex Smith. Right? But just understand, the odds are long. For someone with financial security, they might not be worth it. When you've been talking about a long-term deal with an annual salary north of $30 million a year, it's very difficult to then segue into talking about a one-year deal for 7 or $8 million a year as a backup. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.